Well, hello everyone. Greetings USS Theodore Roosevelt from the International Space Station. I'm Captain Wilmore and I'd like to relay a very special hello to my good buddy Rear Admiral Lewis, Captain Greco, Captain Ewald, Captain Pyle, and Captain Robertson. Now we'd hope to enable all the trons to line up so we could speak directly with each other, but regrettably we weren't able to work that out. So instead, nonetheless, I am very grateful for the opportunity to join you, even if it is by video, and I truly want to thank you all for the service, dedication, and sacrifice put forth by yourselves, all of your sailors and marines, and all of your families on a daily basis. You might have met a small NASA contingent roamed in decks, and we'd all like to recognize and congratulate the hard work and the unwavering devotion to duty of the following sailors. Senior, Senior Sailor of the Year, Aviation Bolton's Mate, First Class Harrison Moore. Junior Sailor of the Year, Master at Arms, Second Class Natasha Gomez. Blue Jacket of the Year, Electronics Technician, Third Class Joseph Everett. And Rough Rider of the Year, Airman Eric Buss. Congratulations. Not only are you fine representatives of Theodore Roosevelt and her crew, you're also fine examples of what it means to be model ambassadors to our great nation. Now, I was able to receive a few questions from each of you with reference to life in space or as an astronaut in general, so here we go. Senior Sailor of the Year, Moore asks, Physical fitness has always played a vital role in the military and even more today. How do you maintain physical fitness and stamina being out in space for long periods of time? Also, how important is physical fitness in your professional realm? Well, I can tell you when you come to space, you don't have gravity pulling on you. Just sitting and standing on Earth, you are fighting gravity and your body is doing work. We don't have that in space, of course, because we're weightless. So, we have to combat the fact that our muscles will atrophy, our bones will lose calcium, so we have to work out every single day. I have worked out every day except for like three days, and on those three days, one of them I went outside and did a spacewalk, another one I was supporting guys, some guys doing spacewalks, and it's not just your standard workout, it's two and a half hours of resistive exercise, uh, aerobic exercise, we have a treadmill, we have a bicycle, uh, it's a type of bicycle, and anyway, every single day, and it is vital to our health and well-being, and honestly, every single morning I get up early and I hit the gym, so to speak, and I feel better throughout the day. So it's just a lot for my mental capacity as well, it's a good question. Junior Sailor of the Year Gomez asks, what type of personal goals do you set for yourself while you're on a mission? Well, I tell you, honestly, I, my goals were similar to my goals when I was a fleet aviator. My goals were whatever my, the officers appointed over me said. You know, here it's the International Space Station program, and I want to support the program and its goals every single day. So I get up, I work out, I keep myself healthy, I eat right, and then I go out and proceed with the plan of the day, every single day. And I try to get as much work as I can, trying to get those goals. Certainly I have a few personal goals, some things. I like to take some pictures of certain things, uh, certain sites that you can only see from this vantage point. But my primary goal is to, salute the, is to support the program. Blue Jacket of the Year, Everett asks, How long does it take for you to readjust to sleeping, being on Earth, after spending time in space? Well, I can tell you, Commander Wiseman is with you today, and Commander Wiseman returned from here for after being here for six months. We spent several months together, so he's the guy who can best answer that question, because he's the one that spent six months and has already come back. I hadn't come back yet, so I'm going to let uh, Tonto, you got that one. Over to you, sir, to answer that one. Not now, though. I got one more question. Rough Rider of the Year, Bus asks, what is involved in the preparation for a mission? And like I said, it's much like going on a, on a deployment. There is much preparation. There's training. There's emergency training, just like we do aboard the ship. We don masks. We breathe rubber, just like you guys do at various uh, times and various, you know, deep press scenarios, smoke and fire scenarios. Uh, we have uh, some hazardous gases that we have to train for and be prepared for if any of those were emitted into our atmosphere. So we have almost very similar and identical training to what you do 
in many respects, albeit some, some are a little different, but we're still training for success. We train our mission. We train uh, uh, all the different payloads and the science that we're undergoing, the spacewalks, all of that. I mean, it's, day, it's two and a half years of training just to prepare for this six months. And it's, you know, the training's fun. I thought the training in the, in, when I was in the fleet aviator in the Navy was fun as well. So, final question. This is a general question that was basically asked by everyone. What is your favorite site in space? So, instead of talking about my favorite site in space, I thought I would show you. First, one thing like I said, zero gravity. When I'm on Earth, I've got like about a two inch vertical jump, but here, man, oh man, I can jump out of the ceiling. And it's pretty cool and fun to do this type of thing, I'm telling you. You can't beat it up here for the fun, that's for sure. Also, many beautiful sights. I'm gonna show you inside. I'm coming up to the camera, I'm gonna grab it. Look here, oh, I forgot. See that there? My last fleet squadron was a VFA-34, the Blue Blasters. There you go, I got my Blue Blaster shirt on. Show it off. All right, Hornets forever. I'm okay, I'm gonna take the camera off here and we're gonna go on a little tour. First off, you see this is an iPad, and things do float in space. We've also got a thing called Air Force, uh, Italian Air Force Captain, Samantha Cristoforetti, and she can float too. See, she's floating right now. You can see that. So anyway, very talented and very, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, flips in space are a lot of fun. All right. So, like I said, we're going to do this tour. This is a Japanese experimental module, and, and uh, Captain Christopher Eddy, she, uh, she weathered our, our little discussion here the whole time. She was right behind the camera doing an experiment, so uh, that's what she's doing there. We'll continue. All right, coming out of the Japanese experimental module into the main unit. Across the way there, you can see a pink glow. That's the Columbus module, the European Space Agency module, and there's a plant growth experiment there. I'll show you real quick. Show you that. We're growing plants in space and they got some special light. That's pretty neat, huh? You see those little vials there? Full of little plants. Probably hard to see from your vantage point, but still pretty neat. Very many experiments going on everywhere. Okay, I also wanted to show you my living quarters. You think the 96 man is small, Look at here, this little miniature, you know, just a little bit larger than a coffin where I live. There's my sleeping bag. We just kind of float in there. And uh, I got a couple, I got my Jack's Links, uh, some uh, beef jerky, a little couple of peanuts. And there we go. And also you can see there, there's my name. I speak a little bit of Russian and with the name tags. And here's where Commander Wiseman lived when he was here, but now that's taken over by Air Force Colonel Terry Virts, who happens to be right here along with our, my Soyuz commander, uh, Sasha Samokutayev. Can you all say hello? Hello. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Terry uh, is our, our uh, Colonel uh, Virts here is working on the uh, microgravity science work box. And uh, he's busy with that, doing a lot of science and uh, also maintenance as well. This is the lab module coming through the lab. And you can see here, I'm just kind of floating the camera now out in front of me as we go around into one of the connecting nodes. This right here is where we do our spacewalks. We got the lights off because we're not doing any prep for that yet. That'll be in a couple of weeks. We'll be fast and furious preparing for three spacewalks that Terry and I will do if all goes as planned. Oh, our table where we eat. And of course, that's way back in there. If you look way back in there, that's going back into the Russian segment. Uh, a little blurry. But anyway, that goes back to the Russian segment. You can see we got stowage everywhere. Our, where we have our meals, a couple of computers. Actually, we have, I think, 60-something computers on board. Here is our treadmill. Yeah, it's on the wall, but it doesn't matter in space. You can run on the wall, you can run on the ceiling. So we got it on the wall. And this is our resistive exercise device. A-RED, we call it, advanced resistive exercise device, and you can do squats, deadlifts, you name it on it. And of course, can't do a complete tour without showing you the space potty. There it is. But the main reason we came this way is because we were going to the window we have on the Earth. And here it is. This is the cupola. 
let me change the lighting on the camera so you can see a little bit better. There we go. I think we were heading just down to South America when I checked before I started recording. And we're probably over the Atlantic by now, having passed the Cape of Good Hope. Some of y'all might have seen that from the aircraft carrier deck sometime in the past. And of course, like I said, here we are. You can see that is a uh, Progress, that's a resupply vehicle. And this is the Soyuz capsule that Terry and Samantha came up on. My Soyuz is on the other side of the station. We can't see it from this vantage point. This here is the Dragon capsule that we that docked just a, a few days ago, actually a week ago. And you can see some robot arm uh, mechanisms there. And that module right there is where we did our video where we started. That's the Japanese experimental module. That's where we began inside that. And of course, come around this side and you can see the solar arrays. So, that is the tour, and that is the view. Pretty spectacular. I know it doesn't look like a whole lot probably on the camera compared to what I'm seeing with my eyes right now, but it's pretty, pretty amazing. And honestly, myself, I mean, uh, I've loved the Navy. The Navy's been very, very good to me. I've enjoyed every single moment I've spent in the Navy, and if it wasn't for the Navy, I wouldn't be here right now. So I'm very grateful for that. So, with that, let me turn this around so I can make sure I can see me. There we go. With that, that is all I have. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, congratulations to all the uh, awardees for the year. You're well deserved. And uh, Admiral Lewis, you owe me an email and a phone call. All right. Take care. So long.